production line. Deforestation is one of the world's greatest threats to biodiversity. And deforestation often results in habitat fragmentation. This fragmentation is generally understood to have negative consequences for plants and animals, resulting in biodiversity loss and even local extinction. However, the communities found within these fragments aren't completely isolated. Oftentimes, there's an exchange of immigrants and emigrants across these communities, and this dispersal links these individual communities together into a larger community. And ecologists call this a meta community. <coughs> Due to the ongoing pressures of land use change and habitat loss, we need to be able to answer the question of how loss of specific habitat types affect meta community diversity. However, this question is quite challenging to answer because, in the interest of in, of preserving biodiversity, we don't necessarily want to go out and destroy forest fragments to test this experimentally, which is where a tiny model comes in. Floral microbiomes are an excellent study system to address this question. Just like the gut microbiome, floral microbiomes are the community's microorganisms, but this time found inside flowers. It's thought that pollinators, such as hummingbirds, as they go about their daily business, drinking nectar and pollinating plants, they're also picking up and dropping off these microbes from flower to flower. And as I just told you earlier, dispersal is what is linking these communities together. So the hummingbird's movement from flower to flower is linking the individual communities found within the floral microbiome together into a larger genetic community. So using this system, I teamed up with a research group from Oregon State University, and we headed down to Costa Rica. We worked with these six co-flowering plant species. <laughs> And we selected Heliconia as the plant species that we were going to remove from this community. The reason for selecting Heliconia uh, was twofold. The first being that we think that Heliconia is an important nectar resource for these hummingbirds, and therefore, if we remove it, we should be able to modify hummingbird behavior and change the visitation of these birds to the other flowers, thereby changing the dispersal of these microbes in this system. The second reason is that Heliconia is thought to be an extinction death which means that even though we see these adult plants in these forest fragments, new plants are not recruiting into the population at a sufficient rate, and that means that given enough time, these populations are expected to go locally extinct. So what our experiment did is we sped up this process, and here you can see that process, where Heliconia is this beautiful plant, it's very distinguishable by these red grass and tiny yellow flowers, and it's roughly between four and eight feet tall. In these forest fragments, we went out and we covered all of the heliconia, that we could, or all the heliconia present in these forest fragments. You can see my collaborator, Caroline Berger, doing just that. And following the removal, we also wanted to understand how that would affect hummingbird visitation. So we used camera traps, pre and post or heliconia removal, to record hummingbird visitation so that we could quantify this change in dispersal. But we're making a big assumption here, and that assumption is that these hummingbirds are even carrying the microbes that we're trying to study. And what I think is super cool about this project is that we were able to test that. So we went out and we captured these hummingbirds and we allowed them to drink from sterile sugar water. And we think that this is analogous to how they might pick from a flower and disperse these microbes. So then using molecular methods, we were able to characterize the microbial communities found in the flowers and carried by the birds. And we see that hummingbirds do indeed disperse the microbes that are also found in flowers. But turning to our data from the camera traps, we see that hummingbird visitation isn't affected by the removal of heliconia, or the extinction of heliconia at these sites. But interestingly, we do see that heliconia and many of the other co-flowering species host specific microbiomes. So what this means is taken together at this larger level, while the negative effects of fragmentation are already appreciated, for plants and animals at this macro level, we're likely to see negative effects of bio or negative <coughs> effects of fragmentation, deforestation, and loss of habitats on the micro level. And this is particularly troubling because we're only just now beginning to understand the roles and functions that these microorganisms can play in these systems. For instance, recent work has shown that specific microbes can mediate the plant pollinator interaction, thereby changing how flowers taste and smell, and this has consequences for pollination. As such, further research is necessary to understand whether these co-extinctions will indeed occur and what the consequences of such a loss might be. Thank you.